Joining us now for a little conversation post-draft and whatever else comes up, our good friend Howie Roseman, the PFT Executive of the Year. He's back in a studio with real – is that real brick or is that fake brick to your right? You know, it, it, it's definitely fake brick, um, but I think the con of the brick, the whole motif really works for this studio. I, I think it's a great job they did designing it. And, um, you know, speaking of that, I appreciate your donations to those charities, great causes – Really cool of you to do that. Um, you know, hopefully we'll make it some annual tradition from someone from the Eagles, hopefully winning some award that PFT is given. Well, I think one of the charities was the Eagles Autism Foundation. And that's my first question. Have you explained to AJ Brown that he should not try to do Instagram live while riding a bike, that he could get hit by a car? Well, it's funny you say that because it reminds me of when like I'm trying to multitask while I'm like riding bikes with my kids and I'm trying to like you know, hit the garage opener at the same time and get the phone. You know, it's it's a hard thing to do, but we're just lucky AJ AJ is good. We just saw him here a couple minutes ago, and um, that's a guy we need. So no no off season Eagles autism injuries. We came out of it scot free from those injuries, and and we're ready to roll. AJ Brown and some other players recently addressed the challenge of basically going back to zero and zero after getting so close to the top of the mountain and having it not work out. What's your concern as it relates to the organization? Having well, a great year that ended so close and now having to start over again and climb all the way back up. Well, I think you look at the history of teams who've lost in the Super Bowl and, and it's not a great um, read when you look at kind of what happens the next year. And we know we've lost a lot of good players, a lot of good people from this organization over the last few months. We got to start from scratch. You know, it's a long way to go even before we get to the first game, let alone before we could be talking about um, teams were playing in meaningful games at, later in the season. And so that's got to be the attitude and the energy that that comes from everyone in this organization. You know, I think it starts really well with Jeffrey and the expectations he puts on us and the process we have from him. And then it goes with Coach Suriani. And so you know, it, it's going to be very tough. Um, we got a tough schedule. Obviously, our division is extremely competitive with three teams making the second round of the playoffs and later. And so for us, it, it's about day by day and doing the right things each day so that we can put ourselves in a good position when we start camp and then doing everything right from there. And I look at your specific experience last year. You guys were great. But at times, maybe it was a little too easy, especially in the postseason between the blowout of the Giants the don't raise your eyebrows. Let me finish the, <laughs> the win over the 49ers when they lost their quarterback early. Do you do you hope this year maybe there's a little more adversity along the way to help the team be better prepared for facing if you get there, a team that comes out of a meat grinder in the AFC with all these great teams that are vying for the chance to get to the Super Bowl? Well, I would say a lot of the adversity for, for us and our football team last year came through the competition that we had with each other and the standards that we set internally. And so I don't know that there was ever a time, you know, we had a two game losing streak late in the year. Um, I don't think there was ever a time that we felt like we, we had arrived or that we weren't facing some sort of challenge weekly and, and the competition that we felt. And so, um, you know, am I wishing adversity on us? No, I'm not wishing adversity on any of us, Mike. I don't wish adversity on you, but do I think in the normal cause of the season that you're going to have adversity and you're going to have something that affects you that you're going to have to come out of. I think even last year you saw that with this football team. And so um, I think that's a natural part of how long the, the season is that you're going to have some downtimes and how you work through them. And I think a lot of that goes to the players and the coaches that you have and the people that you have who are overcoming those moments. What was your first reaction when you saw your schedule? You know, it's always hard for me to read into the schedule um, when we're talking about May. So much changes on our football team, on the football teams around the league. You know, when you think about a game that's in November and Dece December, the dynamic changes so much through the course of the year. Now, I look at it a little bit more like, all right, where are we starting the season those first couple of weeks? Because it's hard to go too much further than that. Almost like when you're building a team, Mike, like it's hard. Someone says, hey, what about three or four years from now? Three or four years is a long time away. You know, you talk about week eight, week nine, we tend to start focusing on that when we have so far to go to even get to that point. It's hard to do. When you see you're going to New England week one and they've already announced it's Tom Brady Day, is that <laughs> something you look at and say, couldn't we have gone there a different week? Yeah. I mean, anything that's not positive for us, I want to happen to another team. There's no doubt about it. We're selfish about that. But 
Um, I think that's one of the things you get when you're when you're playing in New England week one. And obviously it's going to be a fired up crowd. Great test right off the bat for our football team. And is it better to have your short week early like you do week two? Do you like that and get that out of the way? You can plan for that Thursday night game or would you rather have it peppered in later in the year? Yeah, again, I think there's pluses and minuses about it. When you have it later in the year, then you almost have like a little mini buy to get through it. Um, but on the front end of that, you're kind of struggling with it. So, uh, you know, I think for me, I'm I'm a big what is guy, not what if. And so for me, uh, it is what it is and we'll, we'll deal with it and hopefully have a good process throughout. Season. Last schedule question. You've got the giant sandwich at the end of the season, week 16, week 18. Do you like that playing a team that close in time twice? You're going to hate these answers because I'm going to tell you, it's, for me, it is what it is. You know, that's when we're doing it to complain. You either about like the, it or you don't, though. You either like it or you don't. You I don't think about it that way. I, why can't you? I don't think about it that way. You know, I think about it like this is I what the schedule you. is. I think you're, you don't oh, like it. You're calling, you're calling me a liar. Is that I'm not calling doing? you a liar. No, that's, that's early in the relationship to call me a liar. No, no. no. Listen, <laughs> we, we have a relationship that goes back years. I think that you don't want to say anything that's going to create a soundbite. So you're very neutral. And I think that's you I want think. me to create a soundbite. So yes. you're 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 the opposite way. So we're on opposite angles right here. Okay. Uh, let's talk about something maybe you'll give me a soundbite on. Why did you Probably. trade up from 10 to 9 to get Jalen Carter? Yeah, I think when we looked at it, I, I think one of the things just going back it, and, um, you know, me personally made a lot of mistakes here throughout the process and the draft process and looking back. And sometimes it's about getting cute with picks and, and not really going in and getting the outcome that you desired, as opposed to kind of being a little bit more conservative. And so for us, um, where we were in the draft at that moment. Uh, we felt like that was the right thing to do to get Jalen here. Obviously, we know um, the story and the background behind Jalen, and um, we're not we, we don't feel so confident in our abilities to know that we we can make everything right. But we do feel like in this specific situation that um, we have a good environment. Um, we do think Jalen loves football. Um, he wants to be great, and so we're excited to get him here and and obviously work from there. Help us understand what happens during those conversations. You're talking to the Bears about doing a flip-flop between 9 and 10. Are they laying it on thick like, you better do this, or we got somebody else ready to come up to number 9, or you're just kind of left to your own devices to guess whether or not that's what they have behind door number 2? Yeah, I think you're left to your own devices in those situations, and you're you're putting yourself out there when, um, I mean, there are situations where you're trading for nothing, right? I'm not saying it was in this situation necessarily, but you're doing it and you have to be comfortable with the outcome either way. And so you have to be comfortable with the outcome of, hey, I traded a fourth round pick and understanding hey, that could be a good player for your team a year from now. But at the same situation, being OK with not getting the player and, and who is next. And so, um, you know, that's not to say we wouldn't have been OK staying at 10 and taking another player. We just felt for us and our team and where we were that Jalen Carter was was the right uh, selection for us. And then three spots after Carter at nine, the Lions take Jameer Gibbs at 12. Did you have any inkling that they were going to go running back? Because obviously that led to a chain of dominoes that brought DeAndre Swift back home to Philadelphia. Yeah, I, I don't know. that It's hard to know exactly. You hear a lot of rumblings. You're trying to sift through it uh, throughout the draft process and, and get a sense of it. I think what you felt like was uh, there was a lot more love in the league for Gibbs than maybe was portrayed um, in the mock draft community. And so um, obviously everyone's looking for game changing players. Um, not necessarily sure that we knew it was going to be Detroit in that situation. And things happen in the draft where um, you go in different directions based on the players taken in front of you. And so I, th I think once that happened, um, obviously um, we knew DeAndre, we know him for a long time. I mean, this is a Philly kid that we knew when he was in high school as a high school player at St. Joe's prep, followed him at Georgia um, you know, and then uh, we saw him firsthand last year in the first game of the season, uh, what kind of player he could be. And so just trying to figure out a win-win situation for us and the Lions, and, and hopefully it works out that way for both teams. You're on a tight schedule today, and I fully intend to respect it. But I got a couple more minutes before I let you go. What can you tell me about how the Jonathan Gannon tampering situation came to be? How did you find out about it? Yeah, I think I think for for me personally, obviously, uh, extremely appreciative of JG and his contributions to our football team. You know, helped us win the NFC. Um, you know that that was handled as we discussed before at the ownership level, and 
Um, I think the more we look in the past, the less focused we are on the future. And so for, for me, um, that's over with, you know, wish him well in Arizona and we're moving on. Did you guys actually make a complaint or was this the Cardinals raising their hands saying, we realize we screwed up? I'm really appreciative of JG's contributions, <laughs> helping us win the <laughs> NFC. And uh, that was handled at the ownership level. And I think we need to move on. And, um, you know, the less we focus on the past, the better we'll be in the future. You're doing did a good I job. Did the same time twice? Because I don't think I did. Can you I just... Know, no, you got it. You got it right. Your talking points are on point. But Thank you. do you not realize that answers like that make people like me think there's a hell of a lot more to this than anyone is ever going to tell us? And it was a much bigger deal than anyone ever let it on to be. Don't don't you well, see that as a reason? If I was making conclusion? a list of top five conspiracy theorists around the National Football League, you would be on. I don't know that you'd be one. I don't, I don't want to put, appoint you as one, but you would definitely be top five. You're deflecting. You're deflecting. Should it not be taken as a surprise that the announcement was made minutes before round one began? Didn't you even chuckle at that? Good Lord, they're announcing this to the world literally minutes before the draft starts. It, it is possible that's when resolution came, right? Well, I guess that's possible. Is that when? Is that when it came? Again, I don't want to get into any details, but I'm saying there are answers for some of your conspiratorial, is that the word? Conspiratorial theories. Well, that's good. It's good that I got something out of you. I thought you were just going to read the talking points again. We have about 30 seconds. Do you want to read the talking points one more time? I feel like there's sarcasm involved in that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Howie, I'll let you go. Nice fake brick. I have fake brick up in my studio, but I am surrounded by real rock down well, here. I, I do have a question for you. Are any room. of those pots or any of those glasses ever used or are they just con props? You got a lot of stuff going on that's just for show. No, they're actual there for use. They just rarely get used. This is a, a working portion of the house, but the only work that's ever done is me sitting here talking to folks like I you. Picture, I, thank you. I, picture, I picture your family. That's like your bunker. You know, if anything's coming bad, they're all going down to that bunker area right there. You're absolutely right. There's a safe, a giant safe walk in that's just around the corner. That would be the place that we go to if there's ever a code red or a code black or whatever code is for get the hell out and go, you know, save your ass. I personally, over this kind of softer time during the summer, I would love to see a Mike Florio Cribs. I'd, I'd love to see that, you know, like with with your cars through Come your down. house. Come I would down. Love Come down. It's that. not that far. Come down and we can talk about Jonathan Gannon. <laughs> Thanks for having me, my man. See ya. See ya. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.